Hi guys. Okay. Hi Marie. Hi Leah. I was just getting everything set up. <laughs> Took a little while because uh, streaming to two platforms today. So today what I'm working on is Missy, this lovely black cat here. So yeah, just gonna get my sharpener. I'm just sharpen up a few pencils here. If anybody has any questions that they want to ask or ask me anything whilst I'm drawing, feel free to. Okay, so I'm going to actually start, um, I'm going to just do this little bit around the eye here I think first. I forgot I didn't actually uh, tape the thingy down. So to begin with what I'm doing is just sort of putting a base layer down, going in the direction that the fur's going in. It's a nice light base layer down to begin with. So I've just used a warm grey one pencil to begin with. Then I'm going over with cold grey one. I always like to mix the two. It just gives it a really nice tone underneath the black fur there. So I always like to mix the warm grey and the cold grey. So for this portrait, for the black fur, all I've really used are three colours. So I've used the greys and then I go over with the dark sepia, which is this one. And then start to add in some fur strokes. <coughs> Sorry. I still got a little bit of like a froggy throat from the 
being ill last week so I apologise if there's some coughing Hi Alice, yeah your baby getting somewhere with her <laughs> finally So this part of the face is like really quite light. So what I'm going to do is just add like a general overlay of all the fur, just like a very very light layer. And then I'm going to go and add in all the darker areas with a second layer of the dark sepia. So just putting like a first layer down really light layer. You're excited for Gigi? Oh my god, I thought that said egg. And I was like, why are you excited for egg? I've got three devices going right now. I've got the iPad, which has got the YouTube on. I've obviously got my Mac, which I'm drawing from and streaming from. And then I've got the laptop which has Twitch on it, because my Mac screen just cannot handle all at once. <laughs> and the, the comments on the YouTube on the iPad are really tiny, so I thought it said egg. Sorry. Oh, I have a uh, Twitch watcher. Hi, Queen of the Pack. Thanks for tuning in. This is my very first stream on Twitch as well. So I'm going to start to cross stream quite a lot and maybe sometimes just on Twitch just because, just because. <laughs> Pemblebee, yeah you get to see how to do black fur, yeah. You're going to tell her that, yeah. Will she mind though? I really can't wait to start the other half. Um, I don't know if you can see, but like this, this half here is um, a dog, or well, Alice's dog, called Gizmo. And the cat, Missy, is nice and black and like all black. And then Gizmo's really white. And I'm really excited to actually kind of complete this <laughs> because I want to see the black and white together I think it's going to be really uh, interesting with them next to one another so I'm really excited to actually get some work done on this I've just been really busy with um, tutorials and stuff lately and getting everything <laughs> organised for the start of the year, of the launch of my um, website tutorials and things, that just everything's just, commissions have just been on a back burner. But now I've got everything sorted and everything's in plan and in place. Really excited. Ying, ying and yang babies that is really difficult to say fast Alice I couldn't find a picture um, with the scar on her nose so I'm going to leave the nose for now <laughs> I'm going to do all the fur on this side in a second and then I'll work my way back across to the nose I'm 
going to do all the fur around it though and then <laughs> fill in the nose afterwards just because there's uh, a scar or something and I want to get it right Lots of lovely fur. I'm going to go over and um, do some burnishing and all that in a second as well, just to sort of smooth it out because the rest of it I've sort of gone over with the lighter colours so it's really nice and glossy and smooth, whereas this side that I've done here isn't that smooth at the moment. Mainly because I've only added a few layers. So I need to add lots and lots of layers to get it nice and smooth and glossy the scars from her near death experience number five so she's only got four lives left I was actually going to put some little, um, what I did before, and I did some music, but now that I've started live, if I get music back up, it's going to, like, all over the screen, and, uh, i just not going to bother. <laughs> She looks perfect. Well, that's good. I'm glad that she's looking perfect. The brown edge in her ear. Well, yeah, then the the photo that you sent that I'm working from is like really brown on the edge there. I just realised I haven't even finished this art, this ear here, so I should really do that in a second. <laughs> I, I looked at it and I thought, mm, that looks odd. I'll just carry on with the cheek. And I just looked at the reference photo. And yeah, I haven't finished that bit, have I? So, she doesn't look perfect. She, <laughs> she only has half an ear. Don't you mean a perfect? You're like, perfect. Yes. Hi, Marie. I just need to move my iPad a little bit closer. I don't know why I put it so far away because I have dodgy eyes anyway. So why did I put something with ridiculously tiny writing so far away? Honestly. <laughs> Hi Leanne, you managed to, to suss it out that you had to sign in to, um, to add a comment. Yeah, it doesn't let you add comments when it's, when you're not signed in. Bits and bobs. Hi. I don't think we've spoken since you said you were going to Steps. How was that? Did I have a nice Christmas with baby James? I did. He really enjoyed himself. I don't think he really understood what was going on because he's still too young. But he, we uh, obviously hid all of his presents. And then took them down on Christmas Eve and then uh, 
his face when we went downstairs was sort of like, where's all this stuff come from? But he didn't actually know they were his, obviously. But he was really in more interested in the paper and the boxes that things came in rather than his actual presence. And um, he got a lot of clothes, so he was interested in hangers rather than the clothes and things. But he really enjoyed it. We really enjoyed ourselves. It was really good. You sat there for ages wondering how to do it. Oh, Leanne. <laughs> it's terrible. It was amazing. Steps was... Had, had Faye see me and catch my attention to smile and wave too. Aww. Well, that's good. Glad you enjoyed it. I just realised the way that I have set my lighting up. I'm casting a shadow. I think that cheek is pretty much done. I just need to add a few lighter colours over. Next Christmas he'll start to comprehend magical, he will. And we're going to make it magical. We're going to get a little elf door and, and things. So it'll be much better. And he'll sort of know what presents are. He's been a very busy boy this morning. He's been bouncing. And his bouncer. And he tired himself out, eating rice cakes. He's asleep at the moment. <laughs> Can't wait to do I'm going to do the ear now, don't worry, I'm going to do it. Let me just move my reference picture a little bit. There you go. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish that ear for you. I need to sharpen my pencil though. And in case you're wondering what sharpener I'm using, I'm still using my magical uh, Coom sharpener, my favourite little baby. I have three of them. Still my favourite sharpener. Thanks to Sheldine. Oh, is that from the um, collab thing that she posted that we're doing in March? Welcome, anyway. I hope you've been finding my channel useful. I've been posting a lot more content on there. Or here. I will make the most of it, Murray. <laughs> He's um, trying to crawl at the moment, so that'll be fun when he starts actually moving. We need to go out and get a baby gate. I think we're going to do that tomorrow or at some point because it needs to go up because I'm just terrified that he's just going to get up and go and I'm just going to be like I've got no baby gate <laughs> yeah I'll post a picture of the um, how far I've got on Facebook <laughs> so you can see the finished ear then when you finished <laughs> Have fun at work, though. You follow Sheldon too. Yeah, she is. She is fabulous. I 
And I'm really excited about doing the collaboration. It's going to be so much fun with um, fantasy art in watercolours. So not colour pencil, so it'll be something different. Well, kind of different. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I'll have to. He'll have to have a theme song. I was um, toying with the idea of setting up a face cam for this as well, but then I thought, eh, can I actually be bothered to make myself look presentable? And the answer was no. And then I thought perhaps I could have like a separate camera on my pencil box so you can see which pencils I pick up and when, but then I realised I'm doing a black cat and the only pencils I'm using are these. So that seemed a bit pointless. <laughs> but I'm going to work on... Um, no, that's a tutorial, so I can't do that live stream. I was going to work on something else and do a similar type of thing. That was quite colourful. So you can see um, what pencils I'm picking up. Okay, we need to blend this ear out a little bit. And there is a slight bit of pink in there as well, so I'm gonna I need use a little bit of colour. I need a really like sort of cap at mortem I think. It'll be perfect. I also need to blend this out. So I'm going to use a lighter pencil. I might use the white pencil. White? Or should I use grey? I'm going to use the grey. Use the cold grey because it's quite, quite like a bluey tone to this side. So I blend this out, burnish it out with a little bit of cold grey. Okay, it looks a little bit Ben now. Better. Not Ben. Oops. I just squashed my pin. Okay, a few details in the ear now. There's like really minute strands of fur. Just ever so slightly overlapping. 
So I need to add those in. And then I'm going to continue with this side. So let's add the really dark patches in. And there's like very, very small tufts around the outside of the ear here. So we need to add a few of those in as well. I just need to alter the shape of the ear just ever so slightly. I need to make it a little bit more rounded than pointed. Add a few more strands in. Or lines. They're not really strands, are they? Can you get strands of fur? I don't think you can. I think we're done with the ear, so let's focus some more on the cheek. So <laughs> I work in a really weird way sometimes, I don't know why I didn't complete this bit all the way over. For some reason I've just decided to stop there. And I don't know why, because it doesn't make sense to the reference photo either. <laughs> oh well. What's everyone working on at the moment, if you're working on anything? I need something to lean on, really. Um, what have I got? I know. I'll lean on my little ridiculously atrocious mushrooms that I painted in the 10 minute, 1 minute, 10 second challenge that I posted. That was really, really bad. Probably the worst art that I've well, not ever done because when I was little, it, stuff was worse. But in the last five years, this is probably the worst thing that I have ever done. I'm so ashamed of it. So you'll notice when I start to add the colour over this, I've already gone over and added in the whiskers with an embossing tool. So all I've done there is just sort of uh, use this, where is it? Oh, here it is. Use this tool 
which I just got off of eBay. I don't know if you can see very well. But it's just like got uh, balls on the end of it that you can use to indent your paper. So I've just used that and um, indented the paper and like run it along the length of the whisker. And then when you add colour and your pencils over the top, it sort of avoids it. Sort of like when you use wax crayon or clear wax crayon and then add water colour over the top, that always sort of. I'm going to turn this over. That sort of um, avoids the wax, doesn't it? So it works in the same way, but obviously you're not adding water, but it doesn't go in the groove that you've made. That technique though is quite difficult to use if you um, blend out with solvent because the solvents are liquid and the liquid will go in the groove whereas if you're just using dry pencil it doesn't tend to get in that gap but adding a little bit of liquid enables it to just sort of fall down into the groove so if you're using a mineral spirit blend like zest it or Mona Lisa's or something like that then uh, it might go in the gap, so you have to be quite careful when you use that method. If you use it like delicately, I think it's fine. I can't remember what happened when I did it, because I did it quite a while ago, but I have seen other people do it, and the um, colour pencil's actually like flown like a river into the groove that you've made, and uh, obviously they don't have a nice fine white whisker anymore. Right, base layer down. Next colour is the cold grey one, which I'm going to add pretty much like just in the lighter areas. So where she's got some sun shining on her, she's got this bit which is really bright. So I'm basically just adding the cold grey in that area. Thank you, love anime Kim. You started to get tired of solvent. Yeah, I, I went through a phase of really loving solvent, especially zest it, and then I just, I don't know, I just stopped using it, and then, yeah, <laughs> I didn't go back to using it. I prefer my burnishing method and everything. It's much better for the way that I actually like to work. I think with the burnishing, like, there's so much more control. Whereas the mineral spirits, you have to sort of make sure you haven't got too much on your brush or whatever you're using to apply it. Um, sometimes if you add too much, then it can, like, move the pigment of the pencil around too much then you've got to worry about that whereas if you're just burnishing you know where you're going to burnish and you know how hard you're pressing and you know what's going to happen <coughs> sorry I need to drink Pemblebee, you're also starting to go off solvent. Finds it give a, gives a fuzzy edge and it's really hard to get a crisp edge back after using it. Yeah, I find that. Certain things it's okay, like um, when I did my pheasant, I started off burnishing, but then I found that to get a nice smooth feather that the solvent was um, 
kind of work really well for it, so I used it for that. But yeah, it doesn't really give a nice crisp edge, like you say, whereas if you just was to use plain coloured pencil. And yeah, Marie, it does dull the colours. Sometimes it can make them pop, but on certain papers it can make them quite dull. So it depends like what paper and how much you use and everything. So there's like so many different I can't think of the word that I'm looking for, but there's um so many different outcomes when you're using it. Uh what am I doing? Oh yeah. Starting to play around with pencils and pastel mat with the powder blender. I've tried the powder blender and I cannot for the life of me get on with it. I've watched every video going on how to do it. I've even um, tried it with the sanded paper. I tried it on UR800 I think it was. The black tester thing that I got with the coloured pencil magazine. I tried it on that and uh, that's what I did my bubble on. Couldn't do it. I just, I, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. Plus I don't really like the feel of it. I know you probably shouldn't put it on your hands. I just don't like it. Pastel matte is your new love for cut a pencil. I used to use pastel matte a while ago. It was really great, but it just ate my pencils. It, I used to get through so many pencils when I used pastel matte that I had to change because it was just costing me a fortune. Okay, we've got a dark patch here. Sorry, I realise I'm sort of <laughs> covering it up. I love working on big pieces like this, but every now and then it's so awkward, especially when it comes to moving everything around. This is why I haven't really filmed this one or done much with it, because it's quite a large piece and to film I have to work in this format because if I was to move it around like I would usually, it would just be so annoying to watch. And when it's straight like this, it really... I seem to put a lot of strain through my wrist and my wrist starts hurting, like where I'm at an odd angle for the fur direction. Um, and just because it's so large, it's just so awkward just to move around all the time as well. So I do apologise if I get my hand in the way. It's just trying to work around the angle. Strathmore 500 plate you need to try. I've used that, yes. It is a really, really good pencil. Uh, pencil? Paper. It's such a good paper. What have I used that for? Um, now, I can't remember whether the robin that I've just done is on the plate or the vellum. I need to get it out to compare because I'm sure it's the plate. I'm pretty certain that it's the plate that I've used for that robin. It's a really, really good pen uh, pencil. Why do I keep saying pencil? <laughs> it's a really good paper. I know a lot of people don't really like it. 
but I found it to be a really nice paper to work on. Just need to check my. Oops. Oh, okay. Okay. Is plate smoother than the vellum? Yeah. The plate is like really smooth. The vellum has a little bit of tooth. I do actually, if you look on my channel, there is a paper review for the vellum. I haven't done one for the plate yet, but I need to get round to um, filming that. Why do people not like it? I think a lot of people say they can't get as many layers as they like on it. But personally, I found it fine for layering. And I put quite a few layers down. I suppose it, it just depends on the way that you work and what kind of paper takes the way that you work. Because everybody works differently. So paper choice. People always ask, like, oh, what paper would you recommend? Well, paper choice is like really unique. It depends on how you work, how you layer, that kind of thing. So, whenever people ask for paper recommendations, I can recommend the paper that I'm using and tell them the pros and cons of it, but it's really, really personal paper choice. And in case you're wondering, the paper that I'm using for this is actually Fabriano Artistico. It's the um, hot pressed extra white, 140 pounds, so like the um, lighter weight of the two papers that they do for that. It's been my preferred paper of choice for years. Thanks for stopping by, Marie. And thank you. Um, I'm sure I'll see you in another live stream soon. Have a nice afternoon. Or if you're in America, it'll probably be morning. So just have a nice day. Two hundred GSM. No, it's the. Th 300 GSM, 140 pounds. Hi, Alex. <laughs> yeah, Marie's just off. I'm using a little bit of white now just to sort of burnish everything. Hopefully you can see the kind of difference that this makes when I'm adding this over. I actually need a different piece of paper because although I hate this mushroom piece, I don't want to. I don't want to draw on the back of it or anything. So, we just try and find another scrap piece of paper. Nope, that's not scrap. That's here. That's scrap. There we go.
also need to burnish this bit out. I'm just wiping off the pencil build up on the white pencil on this scrap piece of paper. You can see if I was to introduce this dark stuff into uh, the lighter areas it would just make a horrible smudge so I'm just wiping it off the tip of the pencil so I don't get horrible smudges in the lighter areas. Burnish all the way up to that existing part that we did or I did. I'll include you guys as well, we did. And then we need to go over with some more dark sepia. So once we've burnished, what I like to do is then take a really sharp pencil, like this one here, and just add all of the darker parts back in. So I'm looking at the reference and seeing where all these dark bits are and sort of adding in fur strokes. So you can see how sort of dark that's going now and you'll notice I'm not using black pencil just continuing with my dark sepia just building up the layers until it's as dark as it needs to be that's all I need to do with this Sorry, it's just sorting out notification that come up. Um, the Twitch has decided to close itself on the tab. Great. <laughs> um, so the size of this is um 14 by 8 no that's not right i can't remember what size it is let me get my tape measure i know i think it's 18 oh it's 14 by 18 <laughs> i just had to check couldn't remember yeah 14 by 18 inches this one so it's quite large don't I think the cat face might actually be life size I'm not exactly sure how big Alice's cat is but I can fit my hand over my cat's face and I can do this with this so <laughs> I'm gonna say it's about about life size this one
so I'm just continuing to add all the darker bits in. quite nice and fluffy now on the cheek so you can see like all the contours of the face now that I've added in all of the shadows and everything in the right place Thank you, Alex. Yeah, so you've got like a dark shadow that runs along this whisker and I've kind of lost the whisker there so I need to add that back in. My embossing tool didn't do a very good job there. I've got a nice sharp pencil. I'm going to just add that back in. So, oh, <laughs> it's so soft this pencil that it just breaks. I may even need to add a bit of titanium white powder on that in the end but we'll see when I add the um, the rest of it around it so I think I need to do this small bit to go up to the nose and this bit here but because I don't have a picture of the nose I don't know where the scar is um, so I'm just going to add this bit up to the nose I can always change it if it's uh, the scars in that bit I suppose um, just for reference people always ask me what I use as a drawing broom um, I get so many messages on my page about it and it is literally just a um, watercolour brush it's a Rosemary & Co medium mop I really shouldn't use this brush to do this because it's a really nice um, quality brush but it's so soft and it's so nice for the pencil that I just use it as a drawing broom instead of a watercolour brush but yeah it's just a uh, Rosemary Co one This bit that's around the nose here is really, really light. It's like where all of the sheen is, where the flash, or where she's sitting in like the light there. So this bit's all nice and bright. You've got a badger blending brush meant for oils for du for your dusting brush. <laughs> use a big fan brush before that. Yeah, I think a lot of people just use paint brushes. You can get like the proper brooms. That's like a dustpan and brush broom. Can't you? But I've never used one of those. I've always used paint brushes. I know a lot of people use really fluffy makeup brushes as well. I think Alice sent me one. I think it's actually in my pot. <laughs> I should use that really and then just save my expensive watercolour brush for watercolours I 
Did I show the reference in the beginning? No, I didn't. Um, the reference is on my screen, on my Mac. Um, it's going to be really difficult for me to show it without messing everything up. Um, I really should put the reference as a little thumbnail in the bottom like of the screen. So perhaps when I do um, my next stream, because I will be live... I said this last time I was on here. <laughs> I will be streaming a lot more, especially with um, YouTube's now changing the um, threshold for monetization for smaller channels. I've got the subscriber requirement and I am just a few thousand now, like a very few thousand off the watch time. And I thought live streaming would be a really great way to boost that minutes watched. <laughs> so I'm being cheeky and using you guys to boost my watch time, <laughs> um, as well as uh, give you some free advice. But yeah, I will be live streaming. I'm going to live stream next week possibly in the week but if not it will be Saturday again around the same sort of time Saturday's really good for me because uh, obviously husband's home from work and can look after James if he wakes up you had one of those drawing brooms it was quite sni sniff, stiff and smudged the dustings into the paper before that's kind of not good is it you don't want anything that does that when I was looking on Jackson's Art Supplies, and I saw them, they look really like as if it was something that I would use to go and sweep my patio, that kind of brush. And I thought, mm, that looks like really harsh. I don't really want to subject my drawing to that. <laughs> so I used a nice fluffy brush. But I do know people that use those brooms. And they seem to get on okay, but I just didn't like the look of them. They looked like they were going to beat up my paper. So next week, I'm actually working on... I'm going to try and finish this cat. But it's quite slow going. <laughs> I'm going to try and finish this, but I've also got to film two tutorials for Patreon. I am drawing a flamingo, which is actually the generally January. I can't speak today. The January challenge in my Facebook group. I posted a lovely picture of a flamingo that I said for people to use um, to try and improve, and we can use it as like a challenge. So I'm drawing that and I'm actually going to use it as my tutorial subject for Patreon. And then I've got the Kestrel for Patreon as well, which I was meant to finish before Christmas, but I never got around to, so I need to do that as well next week. The one you got was from Jackson's, and it did feel like a dustpan brush. <laughs> I'm just going to get the dustpan from under the sink. Use a very soft mop brush and it seems okay. Yeah, well that's what I've got. Just a sop, sop. A soft mop. <laughs> I really can't speak today. Feels like hog hair, that sort of stiffness. Yeah, when I went to the um, Rare Breed Centre one time, I touched a, a pig. And I don't like the way that pigs feel, if I'm honest. So... Pigs are really weird. They kind of scare me a little bit. You used a soft makeup brush and it smudged the polychromos. The hairs could be too tight together. Possibly. Yeah, I find my brush is working for me at the moment, so I think, why do I need to bother changing it if it's working? Just stick with it.
I'm just adding in a bit of detail around the nose at the moment. So there's like this dark patch here. And then it blends into this really vibrant or quite stark like white bit. Well not white but really light grey. So I'm just adding that in. Just trying to get all the hairs in the right direction. So you can really sort of see the nose shape taking place now. So you've got this hair that's all wiggly waggly up there. So I'm trying to plan which bit I'm going to do next as well. And I think I should really do this bridge of the nose because it kind of looks a little bit odd the way she's just got no nose at the moment. So I'm going to add this patch of white in here. And then get on to adding in this bit of the nose just there is this regular paper under my hand? it is a piece of Fabriano And it just stops my hand smudging all those dark colours. Usually, if I if I didn't have a piece of paper underneath my hand, I would rest my hand here on her face and then smudge black all over. And then it's really hard to erase. So I'll always like to work with something underneath my hand anyway. It just stops like acid and uh, oils being introduced to the paper. So it's really a good idea anyway to do that. Just burnishing a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just going to work around the top of her now. Just add in some small lines. And then we're going to burnish out a little bit more. Make everything real nice and smooth. Get all these details in coming off the nose as well. And make sure we get all of these in. Go over with the white pencil. So when I go over the white with the white pencil it makes it kind of like almost a blue tone as well. It just gives it a really nice sheen and it gives it a really nice effect for when you're adding in like these highlighted bits of fur like this.
You can see it's really nice and smooth where I've just burnished everything out. You find you always get overwhelmed by all the different colours in fur. Yeah, it can be quite overwhelming. And I think one of the hardest things to do when you're new to drawing, especially with coloured pencil, is picking out colours. And I think sometimes having more colours to choose from is more overwhelming because then you're like, oh, should I use this purple or this purple? Or... Um... Yeah, I used to use a lot of blues in my black fur, but it made it look really cold and really grey. And I just sat back one day and just sort of assessed, like, what am I doing? <laughs> and um, then just started to use greys, so just two grey colours, build up the layers, dark sepia to use for the really, really dark shadows. And then every now and then, like I think I've added a little bit around the eye, I'll just add a little bit of, I think I added Caput Mortem under there. But just because there's like a little bit more of a warmer tone, just like a ready purple tone. So I just use a dark colour just to sort of accent that. White fur is probably one of the worst for people. It's one of my favourite. Black first, then white white fur because you can just add so many different colours. You can add basically any colour into white fur and it will look fine. Okay, so I think I've done that bit around the nose now. I'm going to move on to this bridge of the nose. So I'm going to add some accent colour of the Caput Mortem around there as well so you can see sort of how I just sort of glaze the colour over the top. It needs to be a little bit lighter actually. Should do. Okay, let's do this bridge of the nose. So I've got a nice base layer down with a warm grey one. Then going over with cold grey one. It needs a sharpen though. So I always like always always make sure that you have really sharp pencils. It's really important. Sometimes when I'm sort of glazing colours over the top, I don't like to use as sharp a pencil just because when you're like shading and you've got a sharp pencil sometimes you can push a little bit too hard and then you end up with one weird line that's like really dark and it's really quite annoying when you do that so always make sure you've got a sharp pencil unless you uh, feel like you're going to when you're shading or you feel like you're going to sort of mark your work in any way Hi Steve, what sort of paper am I using? At the moment I'm using the Fabriano Artistico Hot Pressed Extra White Watercolour Paper, £140, so that's the 300 DSM. It's a really, really lovely paper. Okay, adding in some dark sepia now. 
So I'm going to start to add all this lovely dark fur on top. I need to make sure that I blend it into this area because this area directly above the nose is quite light. So I need to make sure that I blend into that area. I don't really want sort of like a, a harsh line where I've just stopped the dark and then the light is just there. So I need to make sure that I blend everything down. I'm just using really, really tiny pencil lines as well. So the bit that I'm going to do after this, I will probably work a little bit more on the cheek down here, um, possibly around here too. I'm getting confused, everybody using sanded paper, do I use it too? No. I don't use a sanded paper. A lot of people are using or preferring a sanded paper nowadays. I'm not quite sure what the fascination is about myself. <laughs> um, I, sp I know a lot of people use sanded paper for using the powder blender by brush and pencil which is insanely popular nowadays but I cannot get on with that so I stick with my ordinary paper. I know um, Lisa Ann Watkins uses pastel matte her pieces but she uses a completely different technique she uses uh, watercolor pencils underneath um, and a lot of people use UART paper nowadays as well but again paper pre paper choice is personal preference personally I really don't like sanded paper because it just eats through my pencils the way that I use them Almost on the nose. I always find that when I get to the nose, the rest of it seems to come together really, really quickly. So I'm really excited to just sort of get the nose, crack that out. What is the time? Oh, it's four o'clock. I have a feeling James will possibly wake up in a minute or in a little while so I won't stream for too much longer hi Harry thank you if anybody's looking for amazing colour pencil reviews and things then go and check out the art gear guide which is Harry's YouTube channel. Think the nose is done. Maybe a little bit of, maybe I'll add a little bit of um, burnishing just to try and smooth it out just a little bit. 
Und kommt so. <laughs> so you can see when I add white pencil over the darker colours, it sort of knocks it back a lot. So I have to go back over with the darker pencils just to reintroduce all that dark colour again. But I've got a really nice smooth base now to work upon. first place you look when you're thinking of buying a new product. Yes, Steve. Seems I work my way through every little part, yeah. <laughs> How do I get the values right from the very beginning? Um, well, it's just, I work in small sections and then I sort of evaluate that area. So I started with the eyes and I just add in the dark areas with the eyes and then add in the areas around it and then take a step back, look at it and see if anything needs changing. So usually when I add like the eye, when I add the fur around it, I find that the eye needs darkening a little bit so then I just readjust as I'm going so when I'm adding this bit down here I might find that this bit actually looking at it now this bit needs to be a lot darker so I just sort of assess it as I go and then adjust things I know a lot of people work in a way that they add like all the dark bits down and define the lights and the darks first but I've never really worked in that way. I like to work in little sections. I don't know if that's weird or if that's not usually how people should work, but it's the way that works for me. So yeah, just looking at the image. I've um, realised that this bit here needs to be a lot darker. It needs to be sort of this shade so I'll just go in and adjust it so just like lightly layering over the top and try and get it as dark as it needs to be Like now, I'm just sort of looking at the reference picture. I really should put the reference picture down in the in the corner. It would really help, wouldn't it? I'll remember that for next time. I will make a note to do that. That's too kind, Harry. <laughs> Thank you, though. So I just use like the Capum Caput Mortem, this little little pencil. Let me put it on the white and you can see it. This pencil is sort of like a reddy brown. People might describe it as different to that, but to me it looks like a reddy brown. <laughs> just put that on the, the top of the nose here. Because it's got like a really sort of reddy purple undertone there. So I've just added that in. Oh, just over the top of the layers that I've done there. Okay. 
Okay. So, I think I'm going to leave it there for today, actually, because I have just heard that James has just woken up. <laughs> I said he would. He usually wakes up around four. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this live stream, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. I think it's been my um, best live stream yet, with lots of people watching, so thanks for that. Um, I will be back. I don't know whether it'll be in the week, or whether it'll be next Saturday, but it'll be one of the two, or both. I haven't decided yet. But I will schedule an event, actually, so that people can um, be notified of it. So yeah, thanks for watching this. You missed the name of that colour, the red-brown one. It is Caput Mortem. It's spelled C-A-P-U-T-M-O-R-T-U-U-M. -U -U if you want the uh, pencil number, it is number 169. From the polychromos that is as well <clears throat> so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in another stream at some point um yeah i'll post the final picture on my facebook page and social media and everything so you can actually see it i don't know if it looks a little bit dark but so you can actually see like the details and everything so i'll see you guys in another stream thanks for stopping by